Washington Wizards center Thomas Bryant went down recently with a left leg injury in their most recent matchup against the Miami Heat. On the actual play that Bryant was injured on, we saw him jump up for rebound and he came down very awkwardly on that left foot. Now, initially we thought Bryant was going to have a left ankle injury because he rolled it on this play, but recently the Washington Wizards had released a statement saying that he has a partially torn left ACL and they're expecting him to miss the remainder of the season. Now, we don't usually see ACL tears happen with someone's ankle in that inversion ankle sprain position. However, it does happen in sports, and that's why I really wanna focus on it in today's video. Welcome, basketball fans. For those of you that aren't familiar with me, my name is Nick Gallo, and I'm a doctor of physical therapy. With today's video, we're gonna take a very close look at that most recent ACL injury that Thomas Bryant suffered against the Miami Heat. First, I'm going to show the play that Bryant was injured on so that we get a good visualization for his mechanism of injury. Then I wanna go over why landing in this ankle sprain position led to Bryant's partial ACL tear. And finally, I wanna go over what we can expect from a typical timeline for when he can return back to the court. If you like today's video and you find it informative, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because I will be making more videos in the future regarding sports injuries, rehabilitation, and other physical therapy related content. Also, if you have any comments or questions, please leave those in the section below. Now to start, let's take a look at that play that Bryant was injured on. Now Bryant jumps up for a rebound and comes down very awkwardly onto that left foot. After the play, he remains on the floor and he's in noticeable pain and he's grabbing that left knee. Now initially we see right here, his left foot gets rolled underneath of him in that ankle sprain position. We can't really see why at this angle, but he appears to grab his left knee right afterwards. In this angle, we can visualize the left knee a lot better. As he goes up for that rebound, he comes down and lands awkwardly onto that left foot. That knee bends backwards right here, the opposite of the direction that it's supposed to go. Now first, as Bryant jumped up to get that rebound, we saw that his ankle goes into a motion known as plantar flexion, but as he comes down, that foot goes underneath into a position known as inversion, and he seems to roll his ankle just like this. Now this inversion position is most often what people associate with an ankle sprain because a lot of people have rolled their ankles inwards like this. And when somebody does that, that essentially is stressing the ligaments on the lateral portion or the outside of the ankle. What was unique about this injury, however, is that when he comes down into that ankle sprain position, not only the ankle was affected, it caused more movement to go up the chain abnormally. As the movement went further up the chain, the next joint in line is the knee. And the knee, of course, would go into a position known as hyperextension, or essentially it would bend the opposite way. Now, as I've discussed before, the knee predominantly has four ligaments that contribute to overall knee stability. And they are, of course, the anterior cruciate ligament, or the ACL for short, and it's found right here. Then you have the MCL, or the medial collateral ligament, which is found right here on the inside or medial portion of the knee. Then you have the LCL, or the lateral collateral ligament, it's found on the lateral portion or the outside of the knee. And finally, you have your posterior cruciate ligament, or PCL. And of course, on this model, we have the medial and the lateral meniscus. All of these structures function together to provide overall knee stability. So if a person goes into flexion or they bend their knee, all those structures are working. If a person goes into extension, all those structures are working to stabilize the knee. What was unique about Brian's case, however, is that he went beyond normal knee extension, putting him in a position known as hyperextension. So hyperextension is when you go beyond the norms. And as you do this, you can see all the structures, all the ligaments around the knee become stressed. And the one that it becomes really stressed in this position is the ACL. And you can see right here that the ACL is very stressed as somebody goes into that hyperextension. Therefore, as he was in that hyperextension, Bryant is actually very lucky that it only affected the ACL and that it was only a partial tear. Now, as I've discussed before, there are three grades of ACL injuries, and they are grade one, grade two, and grade three. In a grade one ACL injury, you're going to get some stretching of the ACL, but it's not gonna be torn. In a grade two, you're gonna get some partial tearing of the ACL, but in a grade three, you get a full complete rupture of the ACL. Now, since the Washington Wizards have come out and said that he has a partial ACL tear, we know that that is considered a grade two. Now, it's really important to note that even though somebody has a partial ACL tear, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna require surgery. A major determining factor to see if someone is going to need surgery or not on a partial ACL tear is how unstable the knee joint is. This is most often done in a clinical exam, and one of the tests that somebody will usually do on a person is known as the Lockman's test. And so what they do with that is you're going to stabilize the femur, 
and you're going to pull on that tibia below to see how much a person's leg is gonna move because a big function of the ACL is to prevent that anterior or front movement of the tibia away from the femur. If the person has excessive movement on the injured side compared to the non-injured side, then typically that means that the knee is fairly unstable and that surgery is indicated. Since the Wizards have already ruled Brian out for the remainder of the season, it's most likely that he's gonna be having that full ACL reconstruction that I've talked about in several of my other videos, and that he's gonna be out for a minimum of six months until we see him hit the court again. Of course, the exact time frame depends on how a person does in rehab and whether or not there are any other complications with his case. So it's gonna be really important that we monitor his case moving forward and see how he does with everything. And as of right now, that's all we know about Thomas Bryant's most recent ACL injury. Now, if an update or anything else happens to come out, I'll be sure to post that in the section below. Once again, if you liked today's video, please subscribe to the channel because I will be making more videos in the future. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.